see this brush and this brush. They've both worn a lot differently than the other two. Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome. If you haven't seen one of my videos before, uh, today I'm going to be taking the reverse motor out of my dad's 2010 Triglide Harley. This is looking into the rear of the vehicle from the left side. Got to remove the rear tire. You can see right there is the starter. Excuse me, reverse motor. It looks like a little starter. So there's two bolts to take it off the chassis. There's uh, one on one on top and one on bottom. You're gonna need a couple long extensions, and uh, you don't have to worry about taking the electrical part off. At this point, what you can do is uh, put you uh, like a four x four block on the ground underneath of it, and you can actually pull the reverse motor out. There's a couple of ground wires though that will come out of the bottom bolt. Pull the motor out and set it down on a piece of block and then you can remove those wires a lot easier. Now we're going to take the old one apart and uh, replace some internals. Uh, the reason we're doing this by the way is that it had just lost all, all power. It just wasn't reversing with any, with any strength whatsoever. You can take this solenoid off. It's got a little spring tension, not too, nothing too bad. And there's a spacer. And there's your spring, of course. And that spring sits behind the operating arm of the of the uh, reverse motor piece, nose, nose piece. Position of the spring. You see it there. Pull that out. And uh, then we'll get into the electrics of the thing. And Take the long screws out. Then you can just pull the electrical bits away from the gears, just like that. Notice there's a small ball bearing on the end of that shaft that he just pulled out. You want to here. make sure you don't yeah. lose that. There it is. Right on the nose. Little, uh, the magnets seem fine. Magnet They're right strong. Uh, but there's a like whole lot of carbon right. buildup. Yeah. We're going to take off the rear now to access the brushes, and you'll see that the brushes are just burnt out. Well, two of them are burnt out. Get that cap off, and then there's a like a locking washer that locks the brushes on, just pops off. Brushes come off. And then we bought a kit to do this. Uh, all the electrical bits, the, the rotor and the brush, brush, brush piece, and <laughs> small little uh, brass bearing that's behind there. I'm just going to set it in with a couple little taps. Getting this one out is a little fun. Had to kind of make a little special prying tool to get it out of there. But it goes back in nice and easy. Okay. And getting the uh, brushes over the collimator is a little fun too. We had to we didn't make a tool, but we had a tool that kind of spread them out a little bit and then you kind of pull them back by their springs and get them over the, the lip of the collimator and then uh, and they slip right on. This is the new piece, by the way, the new pieces. Put that on, put your uh, locking washer back on. basically put the housing back together. This part all went pretty smoothly. The parts were a nice fit. They weren't Harley parts. But they were all a uh, nice new. Get that down snug. 
check and make sure we got good good movement. All feels good, feels like it should. We're gonna put it uh, now in the lower housing. Right and don't forget to put your ball bearing back in the end of that shaft. And uh, put your pieces back on. Of course, use hand tools on this. Now here's where things started getting interesting. This is the uh, plunger for the uh, solenoid. And this is the one that was sent to us. And you'll notice I'm having a little trouble getting it back out. I got it shoved in there, but I, I'm having some trouble getting it back out. And there's a big reason for this, and I'm going to show you here in just a second. So here's the reason. The one on the right is the original part. The one on the left is the part that was sent to us. You'll notice it's missing two, two cutouts. It's too big. And now the bad part. So we're going to put this back in, but I'm going to tell you a little story. This is obviously, as I said, not the original piece that we were just working on that we're putting back in. This is a complete reverse motor that was bought uh, all together. And the reason is, is when we put the motor back in, it worked, but then it burned out exactly the same way as the old one did. And honestly, it's probably our fault. We didn't mess with the gearing at all. It all felt okay, but something else is going on with this, with this uh, reverse motor. So I'm going to do another video, a follow-up video to this, where uh, I take that reverse motor and we'll try to diagnose what happened. It is what it is. You know, it's, it's extra expense, but we did get a good deal on this, this uh, remanufactured one. Uh, and it, uh, it did work fine, as you'll see coming up. But basically, the, the, uh, the install is just reverse of the, uh, the removal. Uh, you can do your wires on the ground, get them kind of where they need to go. Uh, I didn't tighten them up completely, but I got them where they needed, in the direction that they needed to go. And then uh, put your motor back in, put the two bolts in. Don't forget your ground wires. Tighten up your uh, electrical your electrical wires. And that's basically it. It's not a hard job. It's actually easier than a car starter, uh, as long as you get the bike up high enough. You'll see on the right there, there's the big ring gear that that starter, or the reverse motor, I keep calling it a starter because it looks like a starter. The reverse motor comes out and engages to reverse. So we'll get the last little bit of that tightened up. And we'll uh, give it a try. And uh, here we go. Works great, just like it should. And actually, the first time we used the uh, one we rebuilt, it worked just like this, but uh, it didn't last as long. So look out in the future for that upcoming video where I'll take and uh, diagnose what happened to the rebuilt starter. Uh, and please, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And if you want to comment, tell me what an idiot I was for not going through the uh, gear reduction. Thanks a lot.